There we go. I just uh, started recording this. I do apologize. I I meant to do that at the very beginning and I didn't. We got some more people that came in, definitely some some names that I recognize from previous months of uh, doing this tax talk with Corey. If you recall, we do this every month. Uh, this particular month here, we are talking about the S Corporation for about 15 minutes. And then we're gonna open this up to questions and answers. <clears throat> I also have some other uh, information I do wanna share with you before our time is up today that I think would be very useful for you. So I'm gonna go in and um, share my screen with you. <clears throat> and uh, so there you go. You should be able to see this S Corporation tax form. Now, if, uh, <clears throat> if you're starting your business or you started your business and you're a sole proprietorship, you can evolve into an S Corporation. Or if you are a partnership, you can evolve into an S Corporation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Even the LLC, the LLC, when you're when you first form that you are taxed like a sole proprietorship or a partnership, which we talked about those the last couple of months. Uh, so as an LLC, though, you can file a form that will allow you to be taxed like an S corporation. You'll still be the LLC but you're being taxed like the S-Corp. Um, they're, they're both kind of hybrids of, of those individual sole proprietorship and partnership businesses and, and a hybrid, a mixture of the regular C-Corporation. Uh, and so, so you all hopefully are interested in this S-Corp today. And, and if you're not, if you came in here for the question and answer part, we'll get to it very shortly. So, in front of you is this S Corp tax return. I do not expect any of you to fill this out yourself. Uh, it is, you know, what you see on the screen here, just the main form is about five pages long. However, uh, depending on uh, what is involved in your business, there's a lot more pages that can go along with this. Between a federal and a state uh, S Corporation tax return, I'd say, from what I've seen, the average uh, size is probably about 50 pages long between the, the federal and the state, and the federal is normally the longest one. So, so there's a lot more than just these five pages. What I want to point out to you today in the short amount of time that I have here is a couple things. One is, are you cash-based or are you accrual-based type of accounting? You have to be one or the other for tax purposes. With that, in reality, you're probably kind of a mixture between the two, what I what, what I call modified cash basis. Uh, you can you know look that up on Google or, or something. Um, and then also there's what we call tax basis. And tax basis is Kind of like to me, it's really similar to the modified cash basis of accounting, uh, but tax basis tries to follow the tax rules more than more than just another type of of accounting process. So I see most people do kind of a mixture of these. Uh, but if the the larger your business grows, then if you do uh, do I should say larger your business grows, you you really do have to try to stick with like and do it correctly, either cash-based or accrual-based accounting. So you need to know that. If you don't know that, your tax return probably has it on there somewhere, or it has to have it on there somewhere. Call your accountant, someone like that. What I want to point out on this S-Corp tax return, two things is you recording your income and your expenses. Now, if you were here with us the last two months, we looked at the form as well, and, and you should you should see some similarity here. These expenses are very similar. Uh, there are some differences, but but they are very similar. And when you get down here to the uh, the other other deductions in box 20, then uh, that is where there's a, there can be a whole list of other types of accounts, uh, expense accounts that you can use. Therefore, uh, um, categorize your 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 expenses as you would in in your bookkeeping uh, system, such as QuickBooks or an Excel spreadsheet. Just make sure you put them in the different categories so that your accountant can use those categories and put them into your tax return in the proper place that they should go. One difference that you will see here versus the sole proprietorship and the partnership is the compensation of officers. This is you, the owners of the business, the shareholders of the S corporation. You 
uh, have to take a paycheck from your business if you want paid from your business. That's in contrast to a, a sole proprietorship and partnership where you you just take what we call withdrawal. However, with an S corp, you actually have to get a paycheck, like working for a grocery store, and you get a paycheck from them. Same thing with your business. I'm going to show you another slide here in just a moment. Okay. Um, as you go down through from the income and expenses, the other place that I want to show you that is important is your balance sheet. There are certain roles involved with an S corporation, whether you actually have to do the balance sheet here or not. And so you see on the left-hand side, if you're not fam very familiar with the balance sheet, there are you know, your assets and they're all listed here. There's current assets and fixed assets and then your liabilities. So you have like your short-term liabilities and your long-term liabilities, as well as your equity down here at the bottom, starting like with your uh, capital stock and farther down is your equity. So then over here, sorry, I might scroll too far. You have beginning year. So that, that flows from one year to the next year, from the previous year to the beginning of this year. That's the beginning of year. And then the end of year, that is the end of this current year. So 12, 31, 23 would be what we fill in for the end of the year. Now, if you're a small enough S corporation, you don't have to fill this out. But the larger you get, you know, based on your sales, based on the amount of assets that you have, there's certain roles there again, will require you to fill out this balance sheet uh, on this on this tax return. Therefore, therefore, it's very important to have uh, um, a tax program by which you can track your income, your expenses, your assets, your liabilities, so that it can all go on to your tax return properly. Uh, QuickBooks, of course, has the monopoly, but I'm not selling you on that. There are lots of other uh, bookkeeping programs out there that are uh, much more expensive and, and also a lot less expensive, depending on what you need. Uh, the SPDC also is working on, and I think we're like like finalized a, a spreadsheet uh, through Microsoft Excel that is a is free. We'll give it out for free for people that uh, that you can use in your for your own bookkeeping. If you're a small enough business, I mean, if you're getting to be you know, a little larger, spreadsheets are not the way to go. You need a software. Versus if you're a small business, not real big, uh, then a spreadsheet, something free, is definitely. Um, uh, useful and and advantageous for you. And we did it really only because QuickBooks has been pricing themselves out of the market uh, that we felt it was beneficial to do something for our small businesses. Now, the next thing I want to share with you to show you is this uh, slide. We, we kind of looked at this, uh, I believe, uh, in the last couple months here, dealing with a sole proprietorship. And, and, and so now I want to show you this S corporation and how it is taxed. So you have your total sales of $100,000 minus your reasonable salary of 35. And then you have all of your other expenses, whatever they were for $50,000, leaves you with a profit of $15,000. So now on your paycheck that you're receiving as the owner, or if you're an employee in, in on this presentation right now, think, in, think about the owners, okay? The owners have to pay themselves. So of this $35,000, the S corporation, which is the business, has to pay its share of what I call the self-employment taxes for a sole proprietor and partnership. Here, it's just called Social Security and Medicare, which is 7.65%. And then the employee or officer in this case uh, has 7.65%, the other half of these self-employment taxes withheld out of their paycheck. So the employer pays 7.65, the employee pays 7.65, together they add up to 15.3%. That again, one last time, is the self-employment taxes that a sole proprietorship owner and the partnership owners have to pay, the 15.3%. That's right here. Then when we get down here to the profit that's left over at the end of the month, here is where there's an ad uh, where, where it's beneficial to be an S corporation for tax purposes, because this fifteen thousand dollars that's left over, yes, you're going to pay federal income tax on it, and yes, you're going to pay state income tax on the profit. However, you will not pay this Social Security and Medicare tax of seven point six five or fifteen point three percent. You will not pay that. In addition, you will not pay local income tax. 
So think of it about local, depending on where you're at, is is like 1% kind of a standard across Pennsylvania. And then if you're in the cities down by like Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, then your local income tax can be higher. Um, and so, uh, so, so let's just say it's 1%, okay? 15.3 plus one equals 16.3% tax savings. Um, that, that's a nice tax savings, I feel. Now, it is true, though. Here's a little catch, okay? It is true that on this $35,000 that you pay, um, uh, you, you in addition to the Social Security Medicare tax, and then down here, down below here, it does say that you uh, still have to pay your federal withholding and your state withholding and your local withholding, okay? But a, a little catch here is you do have to pay into unemployment compensation. Both the business and the employee has to pay in the unemployment compensation tax. However, in most cases, the officer actually is not eligible for unemployment compensation from their business because they're the owner of the business. They're not eligible. And that's in most cases. So, so when you're trying to decide if it's uh, beneficial financially to, to transition from a sole or, or a partnership into an S corporation, and you're trying to decide if there is a tax savings or not, you have to take into account the unemployment compensation. You also have to take into account that the tax return is a separate tax return that gets filed and therefore an additional cost as well. And it's normally more expensive than a sole or a partnership, uh, maybe about the same as a partnership. So you kind of have to weigh those. And, and hey, by the way, the SBDC could help you weigh that to decide whether that would be beneficial to you or not. But if not, go to your accountant as well. That's totally fine, too. Uh, so let's get back to this $15,000. Um, uh, uh, you might be thinking to myself, OK, so if I if, there, if there's 15 left over at the end of the year and I and let's say I want another 10,000 of it out for myself. So I just have to take another paycheck, right, Corey? I'm going to say, no, don't take another paycheck. If if you are taking a reasonable salary, which we're going to talk about that in more detail here in just a moment, but if you are taking a reasonable salary from your business, according to the government, then this money down here, you can take out as a distribution, not a paycheck, a distribution. And when you take it out as a distribution, kind of like a withdrawal for those sole proprietorships, okay, but it's called a distribution. When you take out that $10,000, you've already paid these taxes down here on it. So you've already paid federal income tax and state income tax on the $15,000. So in a way, there's actually a little less than $15,000 left over. We can see here, $460 plus $40, that's what, like $500? So like $500 less right there, you can still tap in, take that ten dollars when you take that $10,000, you pay no additional taxes, none, zero additional taxes. So therefore, you've gotten money out of your business without paying any additional tax. That's a tax saving. That's a huge tax savings. I myself, my business is an S corporation. I started out as sole proprietorship. I evolved into a partnership. And then uh, and then a few years after that, I evolved into the S corporation. And this is the main reason why. Yes, I have to pay some unemployment tax, um, but uh, the the for me, my business at the size that it's at, the, it is beneficial for me to do that. Now, if you only have, $500 net profit at the end of the year, not beneficial probably, okay? You got to have a larger amount of profit at the end of the year to make it beneficial. So on the flip end, if, if you're showing a loss every year, definitely not beneficial other than for liability purposes. But today we're here to talking about taxes, right? For liability purposes, yes, the S corporation can be beneficial. Um, while I'm still talking, if anyone else uh, wants to uh, put in the chat uh, where they currently work at, uh, their type of business, and also if you want to put any of your questions in there, you can as well, although I will allow you to unmute yourself here when we get to the Q&A section of this training. Okay, let's talk about this officer's reasonable salary. So I'm going to go to the internet and show you that... Um, I just went to Google, the number one search engine in the world. YouTube is number two, by the way. And I did a search for Department of Labor average wages. And, and actually, I think it came up, you know, kind of like automatically as I started typing it. And so then the very first uh, result I see here is this uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. Now, I would say just go to bls.gov if you can see that on your screen. However, there are other things. Oops other things after that as well that you'd have to write in. So I just say, type this in the notes here and then uh, and then do the search and find this result right here. When I click on it, 
and it takes me to this website and just make sure you're seeing this yeah you should be seeing it okay uh, and, and so there are many different things that you can look at here. You know, you can look at over 800 occupations in the United States at the national level. I came down here and I said, I want to look at it from the state level, because, of course, those people way over in California you know, are paid differently than we are here in Pennsylvania. You can also do a wage search by metropolitan area if you are in a bigger town. I live out in rural Pennsylvania, so it's two hours to any type of bigger town, such as Pittsburgh. Therefore, I didn't look at that. I went to the state one. So I'm going to click on by state. And what I'm trying to do is find out what is the reasonable pay for someone in my position or your position, whatever position it might be in. So then when I come down here, I can click on Pennsylvania. Pretty easy so far, right? And this, this is even pretty easy. They, they, they've laid this out very nicely here. So, so you can kind of go down through and say, where do I fit in as the uh, employee of my own business? Um, now, you might say, well, I don't see anything here that matches it. Try to find the closest thing. You know, you may not get it exactly, but try to find the closest thing. And then, and then uh, or the other option is you can do a find. So like on my, on, on my computer, I can hold down the control button tap the F letter, which is control find. And then I can type something in the control find up here in the upper right hand corner. So I might type as I started typing here, wait for waitress or waiter. So when I did that, it came down here and it highlighted for me waiters and waitress. Now I do need to go all the way back up to the top to show you what these headings are because you're like, I have no idea what all these columns are. So let me see where I'm at here. So up here at the top, you'll see the, you know, the, the, the description of the occupation, which we already looked at. And then I would say kind of come all the way over here to the right. You can look at the other stuff, but all the way over to the right, when you see the big dollar amounts, that's kind of the yearly amount. So, so that's something just easy to look for as you scroll all the way down. So let me just do another search for waitress. Okay. We get down here to waiters and waitresses. And when I go over to the right, it here says that the average wage for them is $30,000 a year. Now, some of you might be like, well, yeah, they make a lot more money than that around where I live at. Again, this is kind of like a mean or an average. So, and then we also have to understand that we all know we're not crazy, uh, that waiters and waitresses pocket a lot of that cash and it never does get claimed. Therefore, you know, a waiter or waitress might make, you know, $60,000 a year, but they're only reporting legally $30,000. And then you can click on any of these as well. And it will dive farther into it and give you some more numbers. So here's kind of the bottom and the top and the middle. So the bottom uh, waiters and waitresses make like 18,000. The top make 55,000. The middle's kind of 29,000. So this kind of gives you some ideas. And you can come down through here and see within this waiters and waitresses section, uh, some, some subcategories or, or even some of the main categories that they fit into. You can kind of look down through here. Ultimately, what I would be looking at is probably something like this here, okay? Or this medium wage, 33,000, something kind of in the middle is where I'm looking at. Now, if you know that you're in, uh, in an area where the tips are extremely high, maybe you'll bump yourself up to the right. But if we just go with the middle and say, you know, here's 33,000, here's 29,000, let's just for our example, say $30,000. Therefore, if I come back to this and I say, oh, okay, well, I'm already paying myself $35,000, I must be good. I must have a reasonable salary, assuming that that was my industry. On top of that, this is just something I say, um, uh, maybe I should do more research on it, but I feel that you as the owner of the business, paying yourself a reasonable salary of 35000 and remember that this is officer salary, so I think you need to add some more to that to do uh, the boss's job also, which is, uh, you know, uh, um, returning phone calls, returning emails, paying the bills. If you're if you're the one doing those things, you know, paying the bills, uh, taking care of all that back office owner uh, responsibilities, then you then you probably should add some to that. And I've just always said add another ten thousand dollars to it. So so maybe if I wanted to add ten thousand to what I what I uh, looked up, I might be like, okay, I'm not quite. Uh, quite to the reasonable salary in order to take advantage of the distribution. 
And that is very important. You have to take a reasonable distribution or a reasonable salary and be able to back it up with data in case you're audited in order to justify taking what we call a distribution. If you are not taking a reasonable salary and you're only paying yourself $5,000 a year, and yet you're taking a $50,000 distribution at the end of the year, you can get audited. And if you get audited, the IRS can take that large distribution and turn it into wages, therefore making you pay all the payroll taxes on those wages. And if they came and did this a year or two or three after you reported it, then you're going to get hit with fines and penalties as well and interest. So so you don't want to be messing up and, and playing with this. And trust me, people have done this. That's why there's laws and rules out there, okay? Because people like to test it and break it, and, and they have to come up with new laws. Okay, let me see what else here. That, that, okay, and those ones I don't want to cover until later. Okay, so that is what I wanted to cover with the S Corporation. Now, we're going to move on to, sorry, um, we're going to move on to the um, question and answer session of this training. And again, this is open up to any type of tax related question, preferably stick with business. I can I can answer personal too, but let's try to stick with business. Um, and then uh, of course, if you have any S corporation questions, we can do that. And also if we uh, have time, we can answer any type of business related questions also. So, um, I'm going to look down through the questions in the chat real quick, but uh, Beth, if your question is not in the chat and you have a microphone, you can unmute yourself and you can um, uh, ask your question. Okay, so um, again, Beth, if you're able to uh, ask a question or you can put it in the chat, if not, that's okay as well. But while we wait for her, I mean, it uh, does say that um, she'd like to understand what is an S corporation. Hopefully I answered that. Um, if I didn't, let me know. And while we're waiting here, I'm going to answer a question that is in the chat by John Thomas. Try to answer it. Once the selection of cash versus accrual accounting is made, is it for the life of the S corp? Or may I choose a cash or a parole for each tax year as uh, as an owner? May I determine this? Um, so once you you're, you're automatically cash when you first start a business, and then you can change it to be a S or a, 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 a under a parole. Uh, you you can do that immediately or or later on. But then once you if you want to switch back and forth. I'm not sure if there's a limitation as to how often you can do it, but you do have to file a, uh, a document that um, asks the government you know, to change it. And I don't think they ever really turn it down, but you have to, they, they want you to explain why are you, why all of a sudden are you going from cash to accrual or all of a sudden going from accrual to cash? They want to know that. They want to see what your explanation is. Of course, they are pros at reading in between the lines and depending on what you one word that you put in your paragraph that might, you know, raise an eyebrow to them and they may end up, you know, coming and asking more questions, maybe even an audit saying, I'm afraid they're going to try to do something illegal here, you know, kind of fraudulent. So we're going to check into that. So no, you can't do it all the time. You can't just flip flop year to year. You do have to file a document. I almost have it at the words at the tip of my tongue on what it's 